Thanks for tuning into the Weather Classroom. Mike Bono and Dennis Smith with you today. And as it is the hurricane season, a timely topic, we'll talk about tropical weather systems. And that could be anything from a tropical wave to a super hurricane or typhoon. And uh, yes, there are typhoons, usually in the Far East. The Pacific Ocean is a very large basin. And in the Eastern Pacific, east of the International Dateline, including Hawaii, we call them hurricanes, as well as the Atlantic, and back on into the Western Pacific, it's typhoons. The Indian Ocean, it is a, a cyclone. Some of those uh, flooding uh, cyclones in Bangladesh do originate in the Indian Ocean. Now, for classifications of these systems, here's Neil Jones. Depressions, tropical storms, hurricanes. The variety of names for tropical weather formations is enough to make your head spin. So what's what in the tropics? Each of these tropical phenomena begins as a disturbance. In fact, about 100 tropical disturbances form each hurricane season, many over Africa. In the beginning, it's just a concentrated area of showers and thunderstorms. But when it starts to spin, watch out. Now it's a cyclone. Tropical storms are a type of cyclone. So are hurricanes. In fact, cyclones come in all shapes and sizes. Cyclone is just a generic name for a spinning storm. As long as the maximum sustained winds remain below 39 miles per hour, our cyclone is called a tropical depression. It's not strong enough yet for a name. Think of it as a hurricane wannabe. But when the winds reach 39 miles per hour, it becomes a tropical storm. Now it gets a name. In an average year, about 10 tropical storms will form in the Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico. About six of those will go on to become hurricanes. What's the difference between a tropical storm and a hurricane? It's all a question of speed. When sustained winds reach 74 miles per hour, we have a hurricane. Before it's over, winds in a hurricane could reach speeds over 150 miles per hour. The warm waters of the tropics are a veritable weather engine, creating storms of all shapes, sizes, and strength. Again, we talked about the various stages from a tropical depression where there is starting to be a closed circulation, winds generally less than 39 miles an hour. If it increases in wind speed and better defined, it becomes a tropical storm, or winds between 39 and 74 miles an hour, and even stronger than that would put it in various classifications of a hurricane. The best way for anyone to witness what's going on is via satellites, and also when they send out reconnaissance planes. Let's find out what it's like in a trip with one of the hurricane planes. Cloud cover is sparse. One of the C-130 storm tracker planes based in Biloxi makes a reconnaissance training flight. Preparation starts in the early afternoon as the eight-man crew goes through a detailed briefing. The mission can be dangerous, but the crew has complete confidence in their transportation. C-130 was built uh, for uh, cargo transport, short field landings, and uh, it gives us a good capability for flying into the storm. We fly directly through the side of the storm, uh, penetrating the eye wall. When in the air, the plane sends information to the Hurricane Center on the progression of storms by dropping sophisticated measuring devices. As the cylinder descends through the clouds, it measures the air temperature, pressure, wind speed and direction, and sea surface temperature. That information is used to help them determine where the actual storm is, what the storm is doing. We are data collectors. We don't try to predict where the storm is going. We simply collect the data for them. The plane and crew are always on standby, and they are a vital part of the information gathering process to help save lives and property in the event of a landfalling hurricane. I'm Jim Cantori, The Weather Channel. <laughs> Well, we do have a scale called the Saffir-Simpson scale, and uh, that has the different stages of development 
in the tropics, as well as, well, you'll see what we mean. Category 1 being 74 to 95 miles an hour, Category 2, 96 to 110, all the way on up to Category 5, which is 156 miles an hour. And that would be called a super hurricane. For more on the Saffir Simpson scale, here's Dale Eck. Hurricane Camille devastated the Mississippi Gulf Coast in 1969. Winds were estimated in excess of 200 miles an hour. Hurricane Jerry hit the Texas coast in 1989, a much weaker storm, but it still managed to cause damage. There is a way to measure the strength of a hurricane. It's called the Saffir Simpson scale. It is based on the factors which combine to give a hurricane destructive power. These factors include the level of the air pressure, the speed of the winds, the amount of water pushed onto the land by the storm, known as the storm surge. The scale ranges from one to five, one being a minimal and five being catastrophic. It is the storm surge which primarily causes the damage and deaths in hurricanes. By knowing the Saffir Simpson scale rating for a hurricane and by listening closely to hurricane watches and warnings, you can protect your property and your life. On the Elect, the Weather Channel. Now that we've witnessed the developing stages from a tropical disturbance through a depression, a storm, and a hurricane, and classifications of a hurricane, let's experience the damage of a hurricane in 1900. September the 8th marks the anniversary of the worst natural disaster in United States history. The day in 1900 when Galveston, Texas was hit by a great hurricane. There were no modern tools of weather forecasting, only telegraph reports from land stations around the Gulf. The hurricane started far out in the Atlantic Ocean, tracked through the Caribbean Sea and went over the island of Hispaniola, turned to the northwest over Cuba and entered the Gulf and headed directly for Galveston. The storm surge hit in the early evening. Some people estimated wind speeds up to 120 miles per hour. Half the people took shelter. For others, it was too late. The death toll was over 6,000, although estimates run as high as 12,000. Eight to 10,000 people were left homeless as nearly 4,000 homes were damaged or destroyed. The hurricane is the deadliest storm to hit the U.S., making September 8th a date that Galveston will never forget. Dennis Smith, The Weather Channel. That was the major hurricane of Galveston, 1900. Let's bring you a little bit closer to the most current time in August of 1992, ravaging through South Florida, Hurricane Andrew. Andrew smashed into southern Florida on August 24, 1992 as a strong Category 4 hurricane on the Safford Simpson scale. Andrew made landfall near Homestead Air Force Base, Florida at 5.05 a.m. The storm had sustained winds of 145 miles per hour with gusts over 170 and a central pressure of 922 millibars. Andrew caused mass destruction. Vicious winds ripped through homes and businesses. More than 125,000 buildings were damaged or destroyed. A quarter of a million people were left homeless. Over 40 people were killed. Damage was estimated at over $25 billion. Large parts of South Dade County were flattened by the hurricane force winds. As residents of South Florida assessed the damage, Andrew headed into the Gulf of Mexico and turned north towards the coastline of Louisiana. The hurricane made landfall at Burns Point as a Category 3 storm on August 26th. The storm had lost some of its intensity, but it did cause...